she thought he was a gardener when she met him on the road. She had gone to see the tomb where Jesus lay. But when she heard the stranger speak, Mary, I'm the one you seek, she ran to the disciples, and through her tears they heard her say, living only for myself but that only led to pain and misery then in my heart i heard him sing child there is a better way so i knelt down at his feet and let his mercy cover me Philippians chapter number four. I'm going to read two verses here, and those are going to be verses eight and nine. The Bible says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. The peace that passes understanding cannot be explain a precious mystery God has given only to the saints though troubled winds may rage and threaten all that we hold dear we hear him whisper through the tempest my child have no fear what an anchor what a promise we will never be alone in the darkest situations help comes from the throne he provides the calm assurance through his holy word what an anchor in our savior settled and secure 
secure. The soul who finds its rest in Jesus overcomes by faith. Believing God is somehow working through the tears and the pain. This world can never comprehend it, for they have no hope. But we are confident in knowing that our anchor holds. What an anchor, what a promise, we will never be alone in the darkest situations. Help comes from the throne, He provides the calm assurance through His holy word. What an anchor in our Savior, settled and secure. He provides the calm assurance. Philippians chapter number 4 tonight. Philippians chapter 4 verses 8 and 9. There is a lot in these two verses and probably would do justice to catch the top and do a little mini-series right here, but we're not going to do that. Instead I want us to just kind of think on a few things here this evening. How many remember that old slogan, a mind is a terrible thing to waste? Yeah. I remember that every Saturday morning. It was on, you know, during cartoon time. They would throw that slogan in there. And our country has become greatly influenced by education. Young people are strongly encouraged to attend a college, university, or some other advanced education after high school. And, you know, it once was a rarity, a college education. Just out of curiosity, how many of you were, you, you were the first person to go to college in your family? Okay, a lot, of, a lot of you in here. So, uh, it was a rare thing to have somebody go off to college. Nowadays, that's not such a rarity. It's become a commonplace in our society. In fact, it is, it is kind of you're looked down upon if you haven't gone to college. Um, it's like, well, you know, what's, what's wrong with you? And there's, there are benefits to having education, but the key is, is having the right kind of education. Right. Yeah. What has happened in our world is coming apart at the seams is because people are confused about what they are because of their education they have received. And so just all education is not good education. So we got to be careful with what we're being educated by. And Paul here addressed uh, in these previous verses we looked at last uh, Sunday night about the anxious thoughts uh, that we sometimes have come up in our minds there. Verse 6, be careful for nothing. Uh, and the idea there being full of care, overcome with care. <clears throat> it's easy oftentimes to point out the problems with things. The difficulty often comes in trying to find a solution of what is missing to kind of get a, uh, to solve what's going on. And that's the great thing I like about <clears throat> what we have here in this particular passage is that Paul does not leave us simply hanging telling us there is a problem. Instead he helps us by giving us a solution to the problem. And as we look at this here tonight I want us to think on this. Uh, these next couple of verses here for these next few moments and hopefully impact the way that we think. Because it's a very simple, right thinking leads to right doing. That's right. right thinking leads to right doing. The two verses we're looking at tonight, verse number 8 deals in particular with our thinking. Verse 9 deals with our doing. <clears throat> and that's what we need to be 
be mindful of here is taking what we are thinking on and then making it, uh, letting it have application in our life. And so tonight, I want us to go through here, I want us to start off with, number one, if you will, the, the litmus test for right thinking. There's, there's a test we're supposed to go through. We're supposed to run everything through, if you will, um, a, a sieve of, of God's Word and let everything that comes through uh, go through and let God determine what is right and what is not right. Uh, what is right, what is worthy to think on and what just needs to be cast aside. You know, it is never necessarily always this here as simple as what is right and what is wrong, although those should be very glaring to us. Many times it is what is best and what is good. And God wants us to think on what is best. And it just because some, you know, I, I heard this oftentimes as, as a youth pastor, uh, that kids would always come up and they would always ask this question. They would say, what's wrong with it? Yeah. What's wrong with it? And my response often was this here, well, tell me what's right with it. <laughs> tell me what's right with it. And they could rarely give me an answer back. And I would say, listen, if you can't tell me what's right with it, you've already answered the question. I don't need to go through the explanation of what's wrong with it. And they walked away be not satisfied because they wanted approval or they wanted to outfox me, if you will, in the thinking. And a lot of times what, our think what we want to do is we take our thoughts and we try to say, well, technically, boy, I just love it when people use that word, well, technically, you know, when really we should be saying, well, biblically. And that's what this verse does here for us. Notice it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. That's the first thing we ask about anything that we're going to think on. The, when you're going to pick up a book, you're going to pick up something uh, there, and you're going to look at those things, and you've got to ask yourself this question, are these things true? Now, let me just kind of make some people mad here right off the outset. I would strongly encourage you to leave the fiction alone. Okay? Right, I know there's Christian fiction, but you know what fiction is? It's made up. It's not true. Now, there might be some principles in there that you can think on, but I, I, I've got an office full of books, hundreds of books that are nonfiction that would take you a lifetime. It's taken me a lifetime. I'm still only like a third of the way through my books. But just sit there and just going through it and reading those things. And it's all things that are factual things, things that are true things. I'm just, I'm encouraging you here as you think on this stuff here, take, put in, the, put in a, a practice of you or, or to take in things that are true. You said, do you think that all fiction is bad? Not necessarily, but I think there's things better, there's better things to spend our time on. You understand what I'm saying with that? Okay. Uh, I can already tell a lot of you are already mad at me. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> true. What does it mean to be true? And here's what it means. Loving truth. You love truth. The things that you love, you embrace. The things that you love, you want to get more of. Uh, if you love something, uh, you want more of it. If you, uh, if you love your spouse, you want to spend more time with them. You want to try to take advantage of every opportunity you have with them. If you, uh, you, know, if, if you love uh, whatever it is, you fill in the blank. Man, you know, some, some love shopping. And so you can't get enough shopping. You know, that's... Hey, I'm glad for a heated seats in a truck in the wintertime, and I can just sit out there while my wife goes shopping. Uh, you know, if that's you, that's, but you like to do it. You enjoy, you want to get more of those things. That's what love is, that's what we're talking about here, is that somebody who loves the truth, they want more truth, uh, and they, they're, they, they're interested in getting that. This also means this here, it means speaking the truth. I'm interested in, in the, the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's interesting that our court system says, uh, do you swear to tell the truth? It, well, it shouldn't have just stopped right there. Well, no, because in telling the truth, you may hold out some aspects of the truth. So that say, the whole truth. Okay, well, I'll tell you the whole truth, but I'll add my... Uh, I'll add my, my uh, inventions in there, too. And that's why I said nothing but the truth. 
See, I want the truth and the whole truth, but nothing but the truth. And that's, that is my desire and, that, and my thinking. I don't want something else coming in and permeating my thinking and causing me to think wrongly by ha just casting any kind of shade on the truth. I, I don't want that to happen. We all know that somebody gets accused of something and then they get acquitted of the crime that they have been accused of. And yet you will still have people say, well, I know they said they're not guilty, but... I still think. Why is that? Because our minds get affected by what comes in. And even though we may know it's not true, we are, we are affected by what we hear. And even though we may know somebody is innocent, we still look at them, we still have hesitation. Listen, that, that's why we need to be careful to make sure that it's the truth that we're after. John chapter 8 and verse 44, the Bible tells that the devil is the father of all lies. He is anti-truth. If it is not truth, then guess who it comes from? And we got to be careful. we got to be very careful. The devil is always attacking the truth. Sometimes he's up front about his attack, but the majority of the time he is deceitful and sprinkles his lies among truth, leading to half-truths at best. A half-truth is still a lie. A half-truth is still a lie. Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So how do we determine what is true? Well, it's very simple here. The Bible tells us that the word of God is the measuring stick for truth. You take what you're hearing, you take what it is, and you compare it to the word of God. And if it does not line up with the word of God, then guess what? It is not true. It's a simple way to do things here, but this is what Paul is saying. He said, listen, my brethren, listen, as we're closing out this letter, I'm, I'm encouraging you here. What are, whatsoever things are true, uh, put those things in your mind. Put those things, dwell on those things. Well, I don't always have my Bible with me. Uh, well, then, you know what? Get the Bible hid in your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. It's easier for me not to go on the way of error when I've got the truth inside of me. Yeah. And so it's not enough. Listen, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and many of you are able to make it back out on Wednesday night. I'm glad you're here, but can I tell you, this is not enough. This is not enough truth. You've got to have time where you're also putting truth in. And, and I can give you a little bit of truth. And I can give you a little bit of what, uh, what the Bible says. But listen, you've got to have your time where you're in the Word of God. And you're giving yourself to that. Uh, it's not enough just to have three meals a week. Some of you would die if that was the case. Man, if we don't get three meals in a day, we're like, man, I'm, 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 somebody's trying to kill me. No, no. Listen, we think three meals a, day, a week is going to... No, no. Spiritually speaking, get in the Word of God. Spend time there. Think on this thing. Uh, David and, and Joshua both said uh, that you need to meditate on the Word of God. Meditate on the law of the Lord. Uh, spend time thinking on this here. Well, how do I do that? I get into it and I read and I let it permeate my mind. I let my mind get, uh, get just uh, doused in truth. If it isn't true, if it isn't true, it isn't worth thinking about. That's, that's what he said. If it isn't true, it isn't worth thinking about. Number two, whatsoever things are honest. The word honest here means to be venerated for character. Things that, are, uh, that, have a, uh, uh, that have integrity we would use about that. About that same word, integrity. They're honorable. The real thing, through and through. It was a common practice in ancient times when you would come to a potter and you would find a piece of pottery. And if something had happened in the making of that piece of pottery, oftentimes what a... Uh, a disingenuous potter would do, he would take wax and he would melt it down and color it just so as the pot was. And he would fill in the cracks with that, uh, in that pot and then he would sell it, making you think you had a good piece of pottery to use. They would often use it for cooking and things like that. And so obviously when you get home and you'd put it on the fire, guess what would happen to your piece of pottery you had? All of a sudden, the wax would melt off and you'd have a problem spilling out of, the, out of the pot. And so it was a problem. So often what they would do is this here is they would take that piece of pottery, someone purchasing it, they would take it and they would hold it up to the sun. 
Because as they held it up to the sun, the sun would, would come piercing through that, and the discoloration caused by the wax would tell you that it was not a piece, it was not a, a reliable piece of pottery. They would say it lacked integrity. So when you hold things up, you say, well, what, is, what does that do? We take what is given to us. We're taking what, what is being fed to us, if you will. We're, we're thinking, we're, we're, we're reading things, we're, uh, we're watching things, we're listening to things, whatever. And we take those things and we, we hold it up to the, to, the, to the Son of the Word of God. And we let the Word of God pierce through that. And let it reveal, is it true or is it made up to look true? But whenever the, whenever the heat comes, it's going to melt away and you're going to find that it's really false. A lot of folks are building their lives on, on sand. And they're being told that it's a rock that you can count on when the, when the weather uh, comes and the storms come and beat against it. You'll be fine, but the truth of the matter is you're not. You're going to fall in those days. Listen, we need things that are honest. We need to build ourselves on those things that are honest. And so we need to be careful in what we're thinking on. Is it true? Is it honest? Is it, is, it, is it filled with integrity? Number three, Paul says there, he says, also whatsoever things are just. Just. The, the word just here means righteous or upright. The idea that this word carries with is that it is something that is straight. Those men in here that are builders, you're in construction. If, uh, if you're wanting to build something, you want to get a hold of boards that are straight. Nothing like having a board that's bowed and you're trying to make it fit in. It doesn't work very well. And, you know, the, what the Bible says here is taking these things and seeing, is it, is it straight? Is it, is it a, you know, as you look up here, you look at these boards through here and you can start looking down and trying to find those places there. You know, if you find waves, you're going to have some problems. Uh, you got to fill in. you got to do some interesting things to try to make things work. But it's not, it's not true. And throughout the Bible, the visual of the crooked path or the crooked way is used in comparing the way of the evil. You never see God say, uh, the way of the evil is straight. It's always crooked. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that every road in Missouri is a wicked path. <laughs> it is hard to find a straight road anywhere in this neck of the woods. Yeah. A bunch of wicked men built these roads. <laughs> The straight path, you want a straight path, one is going to go straight on. Why? Because then you're not getting tripped up. You're not having uh, issues as you go along there. And the Bible always speaks of, the <coughs> excuse me, always speaks of the path of the righteous being straight. And so are the things we're led in our minds, are, are they the ways of the righteous or are they the ways of the wicked? The ways of the righteous or the ways of the wicked. Think about the things that you are viewing on your television, the things that you're viewing on your iPad or your, uh, your, your iPhone or whatever it is that you use and you're watching your YouTube videos and, and such, what, what kind of, th how do they measure up? Are they the ways of the wicked or the ways of the righteous? The music that you're pumping into your mind all the time, is it pumping in the ways of the righteous or the ways of the wicked? It's either straight or, or, or crooked. It's one of the two. And it, we've got, listen, the, the battle that we are in, Satan, he knows if he can get our minds, he's got the battle won. Yes. And so our minds are so important. That's why Paul speaks here. He says, listen, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. The word pure here is the same word we get the word holy from. Now, the devil attacks in our mind. We need to hold it up to the holy word of God and let it be our measuring stick again, John 17, 17, Jesus said that we would be sanctified by the truth. That word sanctified in there is the same word as holy. He wants us to become holy. He wants us to become more like Him. Uh, but he, he, he implores us in the Old Testament and the New Testament, be ye holy even as I am holy, saith the Lord. And so the question is for us, are the thoughts of our mind holy thoughts? Do they line up with what God, uh, the things that we let in, the things that we're, uh, we're, we're musing on, is it, is it things that God would be pleased with? You ever said this about, you know, thinking about this here, well, I'm glad that they don't know what I'm thinking. You know, sometimes things going on in our minds, and it's funny, you know, we may not say anything, but the looks on our face tells it all. What's going on in the mind? 
What's going on up here? Is it something that is pleasing to the Lord? Paul says, take your thoughts and go through here and ask yourself, are they true? Are they honest? Are they, uh, are, are they, uh, are, are they uh, uh, just? Are they pure? Next he says this here, whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are lovely. The, the guys in our teen group like this one especially. They said, oh, there's lots of lovely things to think on. That's not what it's talking about. What it's talking about are things that are acceptable or amiable. What are our thoughts toward one another? What are our thoughts toward... And just let me meet them in the back hallway. If I, if, just, give me, just give me five minutes with them. You ever thought that? That's not, that's not a lovely thought. So that, that's what he's getting at. Uh, he, he's getting at that envious, malicious thinking that we, if we're not careful, our flesh wants us to go and say, well, you know, I'm going to put them in their place. That should, not, that should be put out of our minds at, uh, concerning others. In fact, Romans 12.10 says this, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. I'm supposed to give deference to you. I mean, in my mind, I might be saying, I think he's as dumb as can be. I think it's the dumbest idea in the world. I, how in the world could somebody be that dumb and still be alive? I mean, I, I could have those thoughts. You know what God is saying? Wrong thoughts. That's not lovely. Defer. Be, be amiable towards them. Try, try to have good thoughts, having those lovely things there. And then he goes on, he says, also things that are of good report. Sounding well, highly regarded, well thought of. And in particular, this speaks to not allowing gossip to have a place in our minds. Gossip. How many remember the old party lines? Yeah. I remember Grandma used to have a party line. And it was always fun to get on whenever somebody else was on the party line and listen in. If you want a good story about party line, ask Brother Matt to tell how he used to clear the party line for his mom. The boy used to have the party line. You could find out everything. You knew what Gertrude was doing down the street. I mean, she was, you know, on there just yap, yap, yap. And you said, well, how'd you find that out? Well, you know, I just heard somebody talking about it. Aren't you glad we don't have party lines anymore? But you know, we, we, if you're not careful, you're always trying to find the latest scoop. You're, you're saddling up and you're always kind of, you're overhearing other people's conversations or you're running to somebody else and say, hey, did you hear? Listen, when the conversation's with, did you hear? <laughs> Stop it before it goes any further and say, do they know? Right. Let's go talk to them. Let's bring them in the conversation. You know what happens? If it's a gossip, they all of a sudden are not as interested in sharing information with you. Yeah. Don't let, hey, be careful about dressing things up as a prayer request. Yeah. Brother, I just got a prayer request I need to share with you. Brother Lucas, I mean, you know, and we begin to kind of just, and we, he's struggling with this here, and I'm watching him do this here, and I watched him, you know, get all, I mean, it just, it just begins to pour out. I mean, it may be true, but <laughs> we need to come and bring him in. Yeah. Go to your brother. Okay? Listen, we, we, we dress things up in such a way to make ourselves feel better about sin. And he says, look, if, if we're going to have the right mind, if we're going to do what we're supposed to, we've we got to go through and ask ourselves, number one, is it true? Number two, is it honest? Number three, is it just? Number four, is it pure? Number five, is it lovely? Number six, is it of good report? And the next thing is this here, he says, is it any, have any virtue to it? Does it have any virtue, moral goodness? Any particular moral excellence, like modesty, purity, what is it, is it building up our virtue? We're supposed to be adding to our faith virtue and virtue. Uh, Peter talks about adding things there. Is it building up your faith or is it tearing down? It's doing one of the two. What are you thinking on? What are you letting in? Is it, is it causing me to want to say, man, I want to live more like Christ today? Or is it causing you to say, boy, I, if I wasn't a Christian... 
Get away from that stuff. So that, that kind of thinking is going to destroy you eventually. Next thing he says, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, does it lift up the Lord? Does it cause you to praise Him? Does it lift up others around us or is it tearing others down to make us look better? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, <coughs> think on these things. It's amazing as you go to the book of Philippians, joy tends to be the overarching theme, but right behind that theme is the theme of your mind. Your mind. Being careful what comes into your mind. Being careful what comes into your thinking. With that in mind, knowing that these things are supposed to be affecting our thoughts, notice here what Paul says now. He says, now, because you have these things right in your mind, those things, think on these things, those things. Okay? Tying that thing together. Those things, what things there, Paul? The things you've learned. Our natural man tends not to, uh, to lean this way in its thinking. It wants to lean on its own thinking. It doesn't want to be uh, taking the time. But listen, we have uh, to be taught. We have to uh, give time to learn how to have a right mind. These things that you've learned, listen, uh, learn how to get your mind under control. He's been talking about it in the whole book of Philippians here. Uh, getting your mind under control. Get your mind under control. Get your mind under control. Here's what you got to do. Test the th thoughts that are coming in to get your mind under control. Now, you, you've gotten these things. You've learned these things. Now go out there and do something with them. You've learned them. Notice the second thing. You've received them. The question is this. Are we teachable? If somebody comes up and they let you know that what you're thinking or what you're doing or what you're saying is wrong, are you able to receive instruction? Being teachable. That's the receiving. Number three there are the things you've heard. The things you've heard. Seven churches in Revelation. Many of Jesus' teachings ended this way. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. See, it's not enough to hear the words coming through, but give, giving attention to what it is, is being said. It's not just in one ear and out the other. <clears throat> yeah, you heard it, but it affects you not. No, no, no. Those things you've learned and received and heard. And then notice this last thing that Paul says, that you've also seen. Paul was putting himself as an example of what he was speaking of. Now listen, that's, there's no perfect Christian. Okay? None of us in here are perfect. Me included. None of us are perfect. However, there should be a distinct difference that sets us apart from the world and the way we handle our lives to where we can sell others that, <clears throat> I know I'm not perfect, but listen, we can take things that are right the way things are handled by them and say, boy, that's a good way to handle that thing. That's a, that's a godly way to handle things. That's a biblical way to handle things. And we can take those things and I'm going to learn from those things. That's what Paul's saying. Paul's not saying, hey, I, I'm perfect so come and do as I do. No, no, no. He said, be your followers of me even as awesome in Christ. The things I'm following Christ in, you follow me. But those things where I talk about the things I would do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. Uh, oh, wretched man. I'm not, no, don't follow that guy. Okay, don't follow that guy. But that guy who's after you over here trying to do all that Christ would have him do, follow that guy. Notice he says, those things you've heard, uh, those things that you have uh, learned, received, and heard, and seen in me, do it. How many times have we come to an altar, we've made a decision, and then two weeks later... We're not doing what we said we're going to do. Yeah. Oh man, preacher, that was a great message, boy. I really needed that, boy. I'm going to go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this and that. Hey, how you doing next week? I mean, next Sunday. Hey, how you doing with that? Oh man, it was a rough week. That was a rough week. We're going. I, I'm going. I'm going to I, this week. I, this week. This week. I, this week. Can I just ask you this here? What are you going to do different? If you do the same thing, expecting a different thing, that's called insanity, I think. Yeah, yeah. If we just keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're not going to have anything different turn out in our life. And he says this here, if you saw these things here, you need to do them. John 13, 17. If you know these things, we, we know them, right? We got the Bible, we know them. Happy are ye if ye do them. Well, you got to do it. 
If you're not doing what you know is right, you know what's going to happen? You're going to be very unhappy. You're going to be very frustrated with life. And so we need to get our thinking in line with what the Word of God says and then let it affect the things and how we do. Right thinking leads to right doing. Wrong thinking leads to wrong doing. Whatever it is we are thinking on will eventually come out. We cannot dwell on the evil and expect good actions to follow. That's insanity. We must be proactive in making sure our minds are right and guarding our minds. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That takes work. That takes, my, that takes this here. This is what it takes. It takes planning. It takes planning. I am not going to let these things in my mind. Therefore, I'm going to avoid doing this. I'm going to avoid doing that. And we've got to take some actions in order for us to have right thinking. Tonight, listen, that's what Paul's getting at. Listen, it's great that you have the Word of God. It's great that you have Bible verses memorized. It's great that you have all these wonderful uh, books that teach you what the Bible says. But listen, if you're not going to go out and do anything with it, what good is it? It does no good to know what is right to do and then go out and do the wrong thing. But at the same time, if all we have is wrong thoughts, we'll never do the right thing because we'll never know how to do it. We'll never know what the right thing is. And so tonight, I'd ask you to do this here. Go through the things that you think on, the things that you dwell on, the things that you meditate on, the things that capture your thoughts. I'm not talking about just all this, you know, just things kind of, you know, come at you, you know, down the highway, whatever. I'm just talking about things that you just find yourself dwelling on. Is it true? <clears throat> Is it true? Is it honest? Is it just? Is it lovely? Is it pure? Is it have a good report? Is it, is it a virtuous thing? Is it building your faith? Is it bringing praise to Him? If it is, hey, keep dwelling on it. If it isn't, guess what you need to do? Got to change your thinking. Yes. We got to change what's coming in, causing us to think that way. It's very, very practical stuff that Paul gives us right here. And it's something that every one of us needs to do. From, from our little guys, listen, mom and dad, be careful. The cartoons, be careful of the children's books. I'd, I'd tell you right now, I wouldn't be letting my kid watch Disney for all the money in the world. Listen, we've got, we've got to be proactive. We've got to get proactive in this thing. Because we've got to guard our minds. Why? Because our, our minds have a way of building things up and we've got to cast down imaginations. It's hard to break out of jail, isn't it? It's hard to break chains. Then why put the fetters on in the first place? That's what Paul's saying. That's what he's trying to get at for us. Father, help us tonight. Lord, you know, you know that the, the devil has a target on every single Christian in here. And Lord, He knows that in our world that we live in today, we are such visual people anymore. Our minds are greatly affected by the things we see. We carry these phones around. We carry all these devices around with us that we can watch anything, anytime, anywhere. And if we're not careful... If we're not watchful, they will be pouring in junk into our minds and there will be things coming in our minds that we never, we never thought we'd be thinking. 
And then we don't have an idea where they came from. So Lord, help us to be mindful. Help us to be watchful. Help us to be careful. Lord, you give us this list. Lord, we know that you use the Apostle Paul to write these words, but we know these words are directly from you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us to take this list, this test, and put it against those things that we think on. And, Lord, may we, may we make adjustments, may we make changes where we find things are not being true and honest and just and lovely and pure and all the things you want us to be thinking on. And Lord, once we understand our right thoughts, or maybe get out and maybe start doing doing those things. Maybe start making the, the adjustments so that we can have the right kind of mind for you. God, I pray that you'd help us tonight. Lord, challenge our minds. Challenge our hearts. Lord, help us not just to <clears throat> brush it aside and think it's no big deal. Lord, it is a huge deal. God, help us tonight. Help us tonight to be serious. To be serious about the things you put in front of us, we pray in Jesus' name with heads bowed.